Vendredi et disait et puis ça pour conversation à Kabawea. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, 10 a.m. and it is time for another episode of Ram Shop Talks. And today, like I promised last week, we are back with the rum drinks. It is feeling like summer today in California, in Southern California. So today is actually a perfect day to make uh, this drink for you guys. So um, I grew up tell you guys a little bit myself here. <laughs> so um, when I was growing up in St. Lucia, one of the, around the time I was a teenager, um, they came out with this rum. It was called Bounty Rum. And there's a little ditty that they always played when they advertised it on the TV. And it was called The Spirit of St. Lucia. And it became pretty quickly popular. Um, when I moved to the U.S., I couldn't find, of course, find Bounty Rum anywhere. And usually when I've had it, it's because someone from St. Lucia had to bring it from St. Lucia for us. Um, when my husband and I did our um, VAR renewal a couple of years ago, instead of champagne toast, we did rum shots, <laughs> which I guess tells you a lot about me. <laughs> and um, we actually had to have multiple people from St. Lucia bring several bottles up so we would have accumulative enough to be able to do um, shots with at our renewal. So that's that lets you know how much I actually really love Bounty Rum. And I was so stoked recently to be able to find a place in California that sold it and delivered. So today's rum drink is called the Caldera uh, Colada and will be made with my favorite rum growing up, Bounty Rum, the gold um, one. And so it is, I assume, um, Bounty's version of a um, pina colada. And so um, we'll get started. I think, um, um, and also what we're going to do, I, I really like the format last week where I made the drink for you guys while I did the um, legal portion. So we'll like keep that up and um, I will be talking to you guys about gifts and loans in estate planning. And the reason why I figured that we would talk about this today is because I'm actually doing a trust administration where um, there was some monies that were disp dispersed to uh, beneficiaries. And we're trying to figure out um, right now, was that a loan? Was that a gift? Is it supposed to be um, reimbursed? Is it not? And, um, and so I figured that uh, it would be a good topic to talk to people about because let's be honest, we're always exchanging money in families and um, in estate planning, it could be a problem when those monies as they're being exchanged are not appropriately identified. Oh, um, we forgot something really, really important <laughs> for, the, um, <laughs> for the drink. The pineapple juice <laughs> we left it in the fridge so um all right we'll get started here we'll make uh, the caldera colada and also talk to you guys about gifts and loans how we see them show up and um also i'll give you guys you know a tip or two on how to to deal with it so it's not a problem or it's less of a problem when you um, pass away so to make our um drink here is going to be a um, blended drink. So we've got our blender all ready to go. And we're going to put a one and a half ounce of the rum. And everything is actually going to go in the, um, in, in the blender. We're just going to like blend it up. So I'm going to add the ice first. And as always, whenever we put the ice in here and come out and it's hot, the ice starts to um, get a little bit hard in there. So I'm going to put a couple of cubes of ice in here and then I'm going to start adding my ingredients. All right. We've got our ice in there. So gifts and loans, right? You, a family member comes to you and says, hey, um, I will. Uh, I'm under demand. And you think to yourself, you know what? I would like to um, help you out, right? That is a very common uh, thing that we see in families. And here's my shot glass. 
This is a two ounce shot glass. So I'm gonna do um, eyeball one and a half ounce in here. And so um, you go ahead and you give that family member the money. You may be thinking to yourself, that money is a gift. Or you may be thinking that money is a loan to be paid back. Right? Unless you actually write it down and tell your, and, and say what that money is, your heirs are going to be left with no clue as to what happens. So I will tell you guys um, a little bit about the case I'm working on to kind of illustrate that a little bit better. Um, my client, uh, she's since passed away and she was, this is, um, uh, the coconut cream, one and a half ounce of the coconut cream is going to go in there. And, um, right before she passed away, she gave $400,000 to a family member of hers. And I'm assuming from conversation that I've had with, um, the beneficiaries, Hey, Pearl, good morning, that she communicated that that money was intended to be a loan to be paid back. My client has since passed away, and we have not found any paperwork indicating whether that money was a loan or a gift. Beyond that, there is no language in her estate plan, which she did have an estate plan. There is no language in the estate plan talking about a loan or a gift or how to handle that at all. So we are left in a situation of, um, a lot of hearsay, um, a lot of potential conflicts of people who are upset because $400,000 is a lot of money. And based on how that money is classified will make a difference in the inheritance that people are going to receive. And so, um, that is a situation where we actually see that very frequently. So if back to my um, example of the, um, of making that, uh, transfer of money to your family. If you're going to give large sums of money, so we're not talking about $100 here, you guys. We're talking about thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you're going to be giving that money away to family, you need to say what that money is intended to be. And not say it, but write it down somewhere. You know, is that money intended to be a gift or is it intended to be a loan? If it's intended to be a loan, you should have not only that it is a loan, but repayment terms as well, right? So are they going to be repaying you back during their lifetime or during, uh, during your lifetime? If there's money still owed at your death, how should that money be treated? You know, um, one of the ways that we can treat it is by having it be a, um, be forgiven when you die or have that money be taken out. If the person's a beneficiary of your estate, have that money just reduce whatever money is owed to reduce the inheritance that they're receiving. So those are options that you can have for dealing with loans, but it's got to be clear, you know, with my clients and we're also doing 1.5 ounce of the pineapple juice here Whew. with my clients, we're having a tough situation because she didn't say, so we have no idea if we're doing a gift or a trust or a, a gift or a loan. We're actually treating it as a loan because $400,000 and there's a multiple accounts that the money was intended to be a loan. So we're treating it as a loan and we're actually going after getting that money back. Um, but it is complicated, you know, and um, I could see the beneficiary, not the beneficiary, but the heir, the person who received the money, I can see him or her saying, that was not a loan, that was not a loan, that was a gift. And therefore I'm not gonna pay it back. And without any paperwork in hand, this is a fight that we're like, you know, um, undertaking. So that is why I think it's very important when there's money being um, shared between family members, that is made very clear what that money is intended to be. And like I said, if it's a gift, you say that, you know, so then, so that everyone, it's very clear written down that that money between so-and-so was intended to be a gift. And there's no repayment expected. And like I said, if it's going to be considered to be a loan, it needs to be written down that it is a loan. There needs to be a repayment plan in place and there needs to be um, instructions on how that, that loan should be handled if you pass away before the full loan is paid back. And so one of the things that we do in estate plans is we actually can do that in your estate plan. We can write it out. And the two common languages, the two common um, types of language that we put in there is, oh, uh, <laughs> the two types of languages that we commonly put with regard to loans is one, 
if there is any amount so we, we we will typically identify the amount that was given you know so this person made a loan to this other person of a hundred of four hundred thousand dollars right and that money is intended to be a loan if the month the person will be if there's any payment um uh, in survival meaning like during life payment um repayment plans we say that like that money is intended to be repaid or that person is re repaying that loan according like a monthly payment of blah 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 amount right so we basically we, we go in and we put that in the estate plan we further will say if there is an amount left um due on that loan um we either want that loan to be forgiven at death meaning that when i die if you still owe me money forget about it you don't have to pay me back and if you're a beneficiary of my estate you inherit the same way you uh, the, the way i intend for you to inherit if it's equally you get an equal share um or we say if there's any balance left on that loan that loan will um reduce and we use technical language for that but that loan will reduce any inheritance that you will be receiving you know and so um i'm gonna pause turn on my blender because i want to make sure that that drink is ready to go when i'm done talking <laughs> All right, we are back with sound, and I love, love, love the smoothie um, option on my blender because it takes icy drinks and turns it into beautiful, slushy yumminess. And so um, I'm going to pour this out here, our caldera, and I'm going to finish off talking about um, gifts and loans. There we go. So as I was saying, we put that language in the estate plan and we go ahead and decide how we want that loan to be, that money to be treated, that loan to be treated. And, um, you know, it makes it very clear um, and, um, during the terms. And one of the times when we see the um, forgiveness versus the um, reject, reduction of an inheritance is where everyone has gotten money over the, over the years. So, you know, if mom is, has given every kid money for like, you know, this kid got money for college, this kid got money to buy a car, this kid got money for a wedding, this kid got money to buy a house, then often enough the parents will say, you know, all that money that was given, everyone's been get, getting money during their life, we'll just forgive any loans that are owed and then just allow the um, estate to be distributed equally. Versus where one kid or one person has gotten so much benefit uh, and, and that the parents would require the loan to be, pay, uh, loan to be paid back to the estate or a, redu a reduction of the, um, of the, the inheritance um, in order to make things fair and equal. So um, like I said, if you are um, making transfers to family member, it is very important to identify what those transfers of money are, is intended to be, gift or loan, have it written down. If you have an estate plan, make sure you include it in your estate plan. And if you, cre if you um, have an estate plan, but you um, are, did that after the estate plan was created, definitely come back. That's, that's something that we would amend for and make sure we include it in the estate plan. Because again, you write it down on a piece of paper, it gets lost. It's put into your estate plan. We, we are basically like um, making it more permanent and um, reducing any future issues. You know, Because in, my, in, my, in, my, in my, my client's case, we could potentially have a big fight on our hands where the, beneficiary, the, um, the heir who received that money can just basically say it was a gift and refused to pay back. And that's going to mean that the family is going to have to go to court to collect on that $400,000. And then it's going to be a hesse kind of matter. So we don't want hesse things. We don't like hesse things. So tell us what you intend so that the administration of your estate is a lot easier. And now we are going to, so we uh, garnish our um, caldera, uh, colada with a pineapple wedge and a little palm from here make it look real nice and pretty and we are going to taste it and see what it tastes like 
It looks really pretty and creamy, and so I'm excited to try this. Oh my gosh, that is just exquisite. I'm not kidding you, this is so, so good. And the perfect thing to, to be drinking on this really warm day. You guys, thank you so much for stopping by. You have a wonderful weekend. If you're in Southern California, get outside, go enjoy the sun because we have not seen sun like that in a long time. I know it sounds crazy for you guys who won't live there, but it's true. If you live near the ocean, this we don't see very often. So if you're near the ocean, go to the beach, go outside, go for a walk, enjoy the sun. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Rum Shop Talk, where we'll be making something else with Bounty Rum. St. Lucia's rum, the spirit of St. Lucia, bounty rum. Bye.